All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about moments and centers of mass. This is a really important and really widely applicable topic. What we're gonna talk about is generally given information about a region or about a shape is how to find the center of mass of that. There are a ton of different applications for this concept. We're not gonna cover all of them, um, but just to let you know, like for example, if for instance, you were doing a work problem, you know those work problems that have like the rope and stuff like that. If you were able to identify the center of mass of that rope and then identify the work for the center of mass, because of the center of the mass would give you the average over the, over the whole rope of how much work is needed, then you could just multiply by the length of the rope. There's also easy applications of this in finding the volumes of solids of revolution. But importantly for this video, we're gonna focus on how to find these centers of mass. All right, to start the conversation, what we're first going to do is consider a very simple one-dimensional case here. So consider the situation here. We have two objects that have different mass. We'll call this one, this is the second one, we'll call this M2 is the mass of this object, and then we'll call this M1. Let's also call, so we have this center of the point right here. This is, if we were gonna put a fulcrum on this lever, this is where these would be perfectly balanced, on this X bar, we'll call it. I also want to define the distances from X bar specifically. And just to make a comment about this, is that X1 and X2 are telling us about the relative position of these objects. But what I want to define is the, di the distance these objects are from this place right here. We'll call this uh, distance one, and we'll call this distance two. In this teeter-totter situation right here, the law of levers tells us that the mass times this distance to this fulcrum point or this center of mass, this X bar, is equal on both sides. Meaning M1 times D1, the first mass times this distance from X bar here is the same as mass two times the distance two. We then can use this to write this a bit differently, including this X1 and X2 comparison to this. So for instance, D1 right here is simply the distance X bar minus X1. So I can rewrite this side as the first mass times X bar minus X1. And that's equal then the second mass times, now in this case, it's X2 minus X bar, because this is greater than that. So I have X2 minus X bar. And then I won't show the work for this part right here, but all you need to do is distribute these mass values and I'm solving for X bar here. So in this case, given this information, I would have that X bar equals the first mass times the distance plus the second mass value times that position over M1 plus M2. So X bar here, given this two mass, one dimensional system, this will give me the center of mass here or this fulcrum point thinking of the laws of levers. Um, also, I wanna point out is that these terms right here have special names. These are called the moments. So when you're multiplying the mass times the position of each of these masses, those are called the moments of those masses. And just to make it clear real fast, in this case right here, the D1 and D2, where the distance these masses are from this fulcrum point, but the X1 and X2 are just giving you some kind of horizontal positioning in this case with respect to some origin point. What we'll be more interested in are actually system of more than just two masses. So now we're gonna consider the system where we have N masses and we're also given N locations for each of those masses. We actually can find this fulcrum point or this center of mass. Um, I don't know what these middle terms are, so I'm just gonna act like it's, uh, it's right here. So we can find this X bar given this entire system. Again, in this case, in the one dimensional case, we're considering that center of mass would be where well, we could pick up this heavy object that has different masses along it, but we could balance it on that one point right there. We can find that X bar, the center of mass in exactly the same way that you would think here. We're just gonna iterate that same process. So a given and now N masses with N locations, we can find that center of mass in exactly the same way. We're multiplying these moments together and we're going to divide by the mass again. So 
So again, all of this is for multiple masses. It's exactly the same idea in the, in the two mass case. We just expand it, multiplying the moments of each of these masses, which is the mass times their location with respect to an origin, all over their masses being added together. Well, we can simplify this. First things first, this, the addition of all these masses is the entire mass of this system right here. So I could just write that as M. And then we can write this in sigma notation. This is the summation from one to N of M I X I. And again, just because we move forward, I'm going to use this vocab a bit more. Um, this M down here, so this without the subscript, this is the mass of the system. And what we call this, the summation of each of these individual moments, we call this summation on top here, the moment of the system. All right, then beautifully, if we consider the two-dimensional system, then we're going to do almost the same kind of iterative thing we just talked about doing, where we consider the two-mass system, and this blew that up into the n-mass system located at each of these n points. So then if we want to step up to a two-dimensional system, where we have our locations of our masses described with two different dimensions, all we actually need to do is apply this same concept to both those dimensions. So again, in this case, what we're considering are these masses that add up to be the total mass of the system, which each of these masses at a two-dimensional location here. The beauty is going to be we're going to use exactly that same logic to tackle this. In this case right here, first we're going to do is, is define these different moments. And this will be a little bit counterintuitive, but it should make some sense right here. So first we're going to define the moments about that y-axis, or with respect to the y-axis. And what that is going to be is the summation of all all of these individual horizontal moments. And just a quick moment on this naming right here. We call it the moment of the y-axis, even though we're comparing the x values in this case. So you think about this, what we're trying to do is take, take this two-dimensional plane with these masses on it, and we're trying to find the center of mass. The first thing we're going to do is try to find on this thing like a sheet of paper, right? That has different weights along the paper, or maybe, maybe a sheet of metal makes more sense, right? What we're first going to do is find on this y-axis or on the vertical axis, where does this thing rotate or where does it balance? That would be comparing the, the horizontal distances. Then in exactly the same way, to find the tendency for it to horizontally rotate or rotate around a horizontal axis would be called a moment about the x-axis. And in this case, we're going to be adding up all of the individual moments with their, uh, the moments with their y-values. So we have these moments about the y-axis and the x-axis right here. Then we can define the actual center of mass of this two-dimensional object right here. And actually for, for the x's, it's exactly the same thing right here. So for x-bar or for the midpoint, the, the x location of the midpoint or center of mass in this case, we're going to add up these moments. And these are all the moments associated with the x's, and we're going to divide them by the entire mass of the system. The shorthand way of writing this, and this is where it feels counterintuitive, but you'll get used to it, is the fact in this case, this is the moment about the y-axis, so we can shorthand this by writing it like this right here. And then in the same way, we can find the y-value of the center of mass of the system by taking the summation of these moments with the y values divided by the mass, and we would denote this as the moments about x divided by mass. And thus then, given this two-dimensional system, these two formulas right here will give you x bar comma y bar. This is the two-dimensional center of mass. And it's probably a lot coming quickly, but just to review these two situations right here, and this is what you need to know in this first part. For a one-dimensional system, what you have these things called these moments, where you multiply the mass time, times their location for each of those, then dividing by the summation of all the masses or the mass of the system to find the center of mass of that one-dimensional system. The two-dimensional cat 
case is almost exactly the same. You do the same thing for the x values. The difference is you just tr you treat the y values in exactly the same way. Again, when you see the notation, it's a little bit awkward because this is the m of y, but m of y is the moments of the x values and uh, vice versa for, for the x's. But importantly here, the centers of mass in a one-dimensional system is described here, and the center of mass in a two-dimensional system is described right here. And so before we get too much deeper with the theory of all this center of mass stuff, I want to just ground this with one pretty straightforward example. In this case, we have a four mass system, a two dimensional system, where we're given coordinates for the spots of all these masses. So if you think about on an XY plane, at, at one, negative two, we have a six gram mass. At three, four, we have a five gram mass. At negative three, negative seven, we have a one gram mass. And then at six, negative one, we have a four gram mass. So given that system right there, and here's just a quick visual of this system. So given that system right there, what we're looking for is the center of mass of that system of masses. And I know that some of that notation can get confusing sometimes, but again, all we needed to do in this case to find the x bar or the x coordinate of the center of mass is take each of these masses and multiply it by its x value location and then divide by the mass. And then the same thing with the y, the, the location, the y value of the center of mass. So I'll write out both those expressions right here and then calculate it. So what I've written down here again is each of these moments, the masses times each of the x values being added together, divided by the mass of the system. By the way, I, I'm not sure how many of you have seen this recently, but this is, is a lot like a weighted average. The weighted average, like for instance, how, how often in a class your, your grades are calculated, you get a percentage for like exams and homework. That's a very much the same concept. So in that vein, we have these weights attached to each of these locations. And interesting to say, when I look through both of these right here, if you'll see the weights for the positive, so strength pulling it to the right of the y-axis right here, there's a lot more going on there. But in the y here, you'll notice that we have these negative values, these negative y values that are probably going to have more pull in the direction below the x-axis. But in this case, for x bar, what we end up getting is 42 kilograms divided by 16 kilograms, which is the weight of the entire system. Dividing these gives us 2.625. And in this case right here, when we multiply and add this all together, we get negative 3 kilograms over the 16 kilograms. Uh, and again, I didn't mention it here, but these kilograms cancel, just giving us this value for this x and y coordinate. Uh, but in this case right here, I end up getting negative 0 0.1875. All right, and that's the work right there for finding the center of mass for a two-dimensional, for a discrete two-dimensional system. And again, what we're doing is we're adding up these moments that include the x values to find the x bar, dividing by the total mass. And then the same thing for the y values to find the center of mass with respect to y. And so the center of mass, just to make it really clear right here, would be at the point 2.625 comma negative 0 0.1875. And then just to clarify what this means is this means if we had this system, so on this plate, let's say we had an origin point and we located each of these masses. If we wanted to balance that plate on something, we would put the, the fulcrum point that we would want to balance this on at exactly this point.